Everybody here? Yeah. 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 Hey. Praise the Lord. We're glad to be back in God's house tonight. And I believe we're going to have another great time. Amen. And had a great time this morning. The Spirit of God pouring out. And I got to thank you card here. I don't know if it was up here this morning. If it was, I overlooked it. Okay. Uh, this is from Winfrey's Chapel Church, just right down the road. Says, thank you very much for the donation of the sound system to our church. And so we uh, we donated the old sound system and, and gave it to Winfrey's. And they're down there used it. And that was a thank you. And uh, we appreciate that. Very much, hallelujah. And uh, we pray that they get some good sound out of it. Amen. <laughs> hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We we started to take off. Uh, Jessica and I, we, we rarely get to ride together. And and uh, so we, we thought this evening we was going to get together and get in the van and ride to church together tonight and, and then go back. And and uh, it ended up, Jameson got a little sick before we left and uh, uh, going up and all that. So uh, they they back at home tonight. So be praying for them. And uh, and I, I I truly miss when they're not here. Cause I can look back there at Jessica and she's just that sidekick that she can tell when, when the devil's attacking while I'm up here. And she just prays that much harder. And I appreciate that. I really do. And, and, uh, so good to be back in God's house tonight. Amen. 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 Well, let's give the Lord a big hand clap of praise for His goodness, His mercy, His love, His grace. He's a good God. You want to be tonight? Yeah. He's come by a good time in the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's stand our feet all over the building. And Brother Andrew Davis in a little while is going to be bringing a word Amen. from the Lord. We're excited. And uh, I believe we're going to have some good anointed singing tonight. I'm, I'm hoping that we can get our good sister Casey up here to sing a little song tonight. That be all right? Yeah, she said, "You know it's right." Hallelujah! So we we just I, I'm just looking forward to seeing what God has in store tonight for us. And I believe if we'll open up our hearts and be obedient to the Lord and yield to the will of the Holy Spirit, there ain't no telling what God might do in our midst tonight. Hallelujah! And I just believe. I happen to believe. No matter what other folks may think. I just happen to believe that God is still the God that can open blinded eyes. He's still the God that can open deaf ears. He's still the God that can make the lame walk. And he's still the God that can raise the dead tonight. I just wonder how many here can say, I believe that. Hallelujah. I believe that that God, all things are possible. Hallelujah. And not only that, but the word of God declares all things are possible to them that believe. Hallelujah. So I believe nothing's too hard for him tonight. Nothing's too big for him. And I believe if you've got whatever needs you've got, I believe God's big enough to meet it. Hallelujah. I tell you, I feel a Holy Ghost shout coming on tonight. I sense his presence in this place. Glory to God. I make us run. If that be all right with him, God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. And whatever needs you have tonight, lift them up to the Lord. Every petition. And he'll hear and answer your prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before your presence tonight. In the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to be in your house again. To worship you, Lord, tonight in spirit and in truth. And Lord, we thank you for the service you gave us this morning. We thank you, Lord, for the singing, the music, and the word that you brought forth. And God, tonight, as we have gathered in this place for this evening's service, uh, Lord, we're praying for a fresh anointing to fall down upon us. Uh, and Lord, you would give us fresh manna, fresh bread, Lord, from your storehouse. Uh, and God, that you would strengthen us. And, and Lord, that you would build us up in the faith. Uh, Lord, we thank you tonight for this church. We thank you for this group of people. We thank you for each one that has made the effort to come out tonight to your house. Uh, and Lord, I know you're going to honor those efforts and you're going to bless hearts and lives in this place. And Lord, we thank you for it tonight. And we thank you above all things, Lord. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for the blood of your Son that cleanses from all sin. And we thank you, God, tonight that you're preparing a place for all your children. And one day when this life is over, we're going to that beautiful city that's being prepared. And Lord, I thank you that this world isn't my home.
home. I'm just passing through. God, I'm going to be stepping into that city someday. And Lord, I love you tonight. We love you, God, in this place. And we just desire a mighty outpouring of the Holy Ghost and power. And Lord, fill us tonight with that power from on high. And Lord, we thank you tonight, Lord. Lord, be with the music, the singing, be with the preaching, and let your anointing be upon it. And everything that's done, may it be done to your honor and your glory, not for anything that we can be seen of anything. Lord, we don't want any honor or recognition of this world. But God, that we would be honored in heaven, Lord, and recognized in heaven tonight. And so look upon us tonight, God, and fill us with your power. And we praise you and thank you for it tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, we ask these things. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. amen and amen. Give him one more big praise. You? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, we can do better than that. Glory to God. He's a mighty good God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let me just read while you're standing. We're getting ready to sing. I was going to read this. This come to my mind just now while we are praying. And I love this. The very first song. Psalms chapter 1. Listen to what the psalmist said. The Bible says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. In other words, the word of God is his delight. How many can say the word of God is my delight tonight? I delight. In the word of God does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water. That brings forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. Nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly. God then shall perish. I don't know about you tonight, but I'm glad I'm in the pathway that's called holiness. I'm glad I'm in the right way tonight. Hallelujah. I'm on my way to heaven. I'm in that path that God has laid out tonight. I'm glad I don't do our arms with the world. I'm with Jesus. Hallelujah. And I have found him to be sufficient. Glory to God. Yeah. Hey. 
Get me a mic stand over there. <laughs> and, a, and a guitar strap. <laughs> uh, Sister Casey, you want to come on up? And, uh, real quick while she's coming up, uh, just to get up to say, uh, don't forget, uh, we are real right here at Old Revival. And May the 5th, 28th, boy, it's going to be a great time. So I'm just looking forward to it. Amen. We're going to have a revival camp meeting. And Brother Gordon Berry is going to be here. That's May the 5th through the 8th, 6 o'clock each night. We're going to have a great time. Our Grace Union singers are going to be singing. And uh, it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful time. May the 15th, the pancake breakfast at Leftwich Hall, 7 o'clock to 10.30. There's a paper on the board in the back for the, uh, the things that are needed. If you have any other questions, see Marilyn. And uh, May the 16th, Living Proof will be here to sing. And so uh, be praying for that. Bible school to the 7th through the 11th. And it's going to be a great time. Be praying for these services coming up. We're going to have a great, great time in the Lord. This Friday night we'll be starting revival at Old Concord Methodist Church. I don't know if they're normal Methodists, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. Hallelujah. And so but we're going to have a great time in the Lord there. And uh, that starts Friday night over in Columbia at uh, 6 o'clock each night. So we're going to have a great time. And uh, Doug, you're going you're gonna to help her out? Do you need a model? You going to sing solo? <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Let's give Sister Casey a big hand. She says, yes, <laughs>
appreciate Brother Andrew. Amen. And uh, appreciate him so much. He's ready and ready like a, a bull ready to be let loose. And, Hallelujah. And uh, I, I appreciate these young guys. I don't know. I, I just I, I just don't have the words to say what they mean to me. And, uh, you know, God is raising a young men today. Amen. That's going to stand on the word of God. Amen. And it's not going to get caught up in all this newfangled stuff that's in the modern churches today. But they're going to stand and preach the word of God with boldness and an anointing. Hallelujah. And so we're thankful for Brother Andrew. They've been with us the last several weeks. And, uh, and appreciate him so much. And let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before your presence tonight in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for my brother Andrew and his family, God. And Lord, we thank you for the calling that you placed upon his life. And, and Lord, the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit that is upon him and within him. And I know tonight, Lord, you have given him a divine word uh, that is just for us in this particular place and particular time tonight. And so, Lord, I pray that every Every ear be open, Lord. Every heart would be open to receive. Every ear open to hear, God, what the Spirit is saying to the church. And Lord, tonight I pray, Lord, as you place your words upon Brother Andrew's lips, I know he's going to be obedient to you, and he's going to do just what you have him to do tonight. And Lord, we thank you and praise you for it. And I pray every need be met here tonight. And Lord, may we leave this place tonight, not only hearers of the word, but God, let us be doers of your word and Lord to put your word that's in our heart in action God and Lord we thank you tonight for Brother Andrew and Cindy and all their children and their family bless them in a mighty way and we give you praise and honor and glory for it in Jesus name Amen Amen, Amen. 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 Give Brother Andrew a big hand Actually, remember family Matthew Chapman. He's from Greene County. He's 23. Went to school with me, and he uh, he passed away this week. And I'd say it's pretty hard on his family. So remember him. That, that, that hit me pretty hard. Remember that family. And remember the sister here. She's requested prayers this afternoon. Yeah. Her family. Anybody else? Fully pray. If not, join with me in altar. Let's, hear the let's, let's call out to God. Yeah.
It gets rid of the dross, is what it's called. It separates the dross from the metal so that it can come out pure and so that it can come out clean. How many, how many of you tonight? He's a little bit that refining fire. Yeah. I need some of that refining fire in my life. And that fuller soap, it says that it is a refining fire and a fuller soap. Yeah. Tonight, let me ask you something. How many of you have been in such a valley that you didn't think you could see those? Yeah. 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 Oh. Been in such a valley that you didn't know if you was going to make it through. Yeah. Yeah. I've been there. There's been some rough times in my life. There's been some times that the Lord... I thought, where are you at, God? You know, are you there for me? I thought I was saved. I, I, I wondered where you at, God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was right by my side. Yeah. Lord, thank you, God. Yeah. I think about my Lord and how he's never left me or forsaken me. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. I think about how he's never left me or forsaken me. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Yeah. Like yeah. I testified this morning, people will fail you. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. your heart. Yeah. I've had some people look you dead in the eyes and break your heart. Oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah. But I know a man. Oh, yeah. I know a man named Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. I know a man named Jesus. Yeah. 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 He said, I will never leave you nor yeah. forsake you. Yeah. I love you. You are my child. Yeah. It is not my will that any should perish, yeah. but that all should come to repentance. Yeah. Let me tell you this. It is not God's will that any should die and go to the devil's hell, oh, but right. that all should come to repentance. Oh, so yeah. tonight, Search your hearts tonight. Do you need that refining fire in your life? Do you need to be cleansed with that refining fire? Does that dross of your heart need to be separated? Does the iniquity in your life need to be separated and come out so full and so clean and so pure that you're fit for the kingdom of God? Glory be to God. Tonight, that refining fire, that fuller soap, it says that and he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. He shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. He will clean you up so that you can worship him. You know, these past couple of weeks we've been talking about that garment of praise, right? That instrument of praise to get Satan off your back. He will clean you up with that fire tonight. Yeah, he will take you through the fire and clean you up tonight so that you can get out that instrument of praise. Oh, right? So that we can praise God in spirit and in truth. That's what we come to church for, right? We come to praise God in spirit and in truth. And when I walked in the door of this church, I felt something different. You know, I feel something different than I see in other churches. This, like Brother Joe said, this is a rock. Grace Union is a rock. Lord is building his church. Yes, I appreciate that with all my heart. But keep being obedient. I will encourage you to keep being obedient. And, and when God is taking you through a rough time, don't see it as, woe is me. I've been there. I've been there. Woe is me. I've got all these reasons to complain. I've got all these reasons to, to find fault with God. Yeah, come on, brother. He's working for good. Yes, he is. He's cleaning you up. Like, you know. He is taking you through an immense amount of pressure. And, and you think about that, that metal. Like I said, it's got to be a hot fire. Yeah. It's not just an easy fire. It's got to be hot. Awesome. Same thing with God. To separate the dross and the iniquity from your heart. Yeah, that's right. It's going to take you through some pressure. It is yeah. going to be hard. So the harder the trial is, the cleaner you come out. Yeah. You come out as a salvation of God. It says, Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord, as in the days of old, as in former years. It will be pleasant unto the Lord. How many of you tonight want to be pleasant to your God? Yeah. I want to be present yeah. and pleasant to the Lord. Yeah. I want to be able to be used. I want to be that metal that is malleable, you know, that is able to be used for yeah. God. And if we're not being obedient, if we're not listening, how can we be used? That's right. That's right. It starts with us. Yeah. You know, yeah. you hear it said that. Holy Spirit comes down upon us. And God is, is ready to send the Holy Spirit. We have to be ready. We have to be prepared. But in that, that refining fire, it also talks about a fuller soap. What's that mean? Cleansing power in the blood of the Lamb. You know, I can take an old dirty garment and I can run it through the wash. And if I just wash it in water, what's going to happen? The stain is still going to be there. The stain is still going to be there on the other side of the wash. Yeah. Amen. But it says that he is a fuller's soap. Yeah. Now back then in the Bible, they had fullers. 
And a fuller's job was to use the soap right. and scrub out the dirt. Right. Scrub out the hole. That, yeah. that very sense of soap right. will separate the oil, the grit, the grime, the grease. Yeah. Okay, let's think about your own Christian life. That yeah. dirt is sin. That's right. That's right. The burden of sin in your life. It says that we were conceived into sin. Yeah. We yeah. can't avoid it. Right. Amen. We are creatures of habit. We are creatures yeah. that are going to sin. It talks about in the Bible that a sow that is washed wants to return to the mire. Right. Well, yeah. all that you wash is going to go straight back to the mud. Yeah. That's our sin nature. As humans, it is our nature to return to sin. Yeah. Right. But, but, there's always a but, right? Yeah. Jesus Christ Thank you, Lord. is Thank refining you. fire. Yeah. Yeah. And full of soap yeah. that yeah. will cleanse the tribe of Levi. And he will cleanse you and I if we will let him. He yeah. will take yeah. us through the fire. He will take us through the wash. And sometimes it hurts a little bit. Amen. Yeah. God's struggling with that soap. Yeah. Yeah. He's struggling that heart. He's trying to make you clean and pure. And you yeah. think, well, I have got it worse than anybody on this earth. I've done it worse than anybody. Woe is me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Satan's lying to you. That's right, man. Right. What Satan is using for bad, what man is using for bad, God is using for good. Come on. Yeah. Glory be to God. God is using it for good. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Yeah, that's good work. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5. Thank you. And it says, Who then is Paul and who is Apollos, but a minister's? By whom you believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. I have planted Apollos water, but God gave the increase. I have planted Apollos water, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward. According to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. According to the grace of God. Which is given unto me as a wise master builder. I have laid the foundation. Another buildeth thereon. And let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay. Glory be to God. Yeah. No other foundation can be laid than that which is laid, yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Now, if any man yeah. build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it. Listen to this. Because it shall be revealed by fire. Amen. Glory be to God. It shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Did you catch that? Amen. The fire shall try every man's work Amen. according to what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Verse 15. But if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Now, when I read that, that puts something inside of me. Yeah, come on. That puts a Holy Ghost spirit inside of me that tells me that I am the temple of the living God. Yeah, I am the temple of the God in heaven. And if I defile that temple with anything I so say or do, it says God will destroy him. That's right. It says God will destroy him who defiled the temple of the living God. That's right. But as we talk about this, it says... Every, way, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. That's right. That's right. So the thought of my mind tonight is, first of all, he's going to take you through the fire. That refining fire to make you better. Right. To make you cleaner. To make you purer. But it's, as we read this verse, it says that he will try your works to see what foundation you're building on. Right. He will try your works. It says that no other foundation can be laid except that which is laid. And that is Jesus Christ. Amen. Paul said Amen. that I built the foundation. I said it. I laid it out there for you. But Jesus Christ has already set the foundation. I preached it. I set up this church. 
Yes. Let me tell you something. That foundation is Jesus Christ. It yes. says that He is the chief cornerstone, that He is the lion of the tribe of Judah, yes. that He is the soul of the builders of Jacob. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes, He is. I'll tell you what. Thank you, Lord. I'll take that stone any day. Amen. Lord, amen. God. He is the stone that the builders rejected. Amen. But I will take that stone any day and I will build on yeah. that stone. Yeah. Because if we build on that stone, that holy fire from heaven will come down on us yeah. and we can glorify God in spirit and truth. That's all that it takes, church. What I'm telling you tonight is it takes salvation to get to heaven. Amen. It takes salvation to get to heaven. There is no other way. And I want to put it in such a way that a child can understand it. Yeah. Come on. Let me just tell you this. When God knocks on your heart, when He is calling you to be saved, you'll know it. He will be knocking on your heart. He will be drawing you. The Bible says that no man comes to the Father unless the Spirit draws him. The Spirit must draw him. So many people leave out the Holy Spirit. And that's all. That's what Brother Joe preaches about time in and time out. So many people leave out the Holy Spirit, but He is just as real as God is. He is part of the divine God. Yeah, that's right. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. There's no leaving any of them out. But the Bible says to come to the Father, you must be drawn by the Spirit. And when that Spirit draws and knocks on the heart, you can do one of two things. And I'll put it like this. Revelation says that, behold, I stand at the door and knock. He that openeth the door, I will come in with him. Yeah. And I will suffer with him. Yeah. I will commune with him. I will have suffer with him. Yeah. Glory be to God. I will come in and suffer with him. Yeah. So that's option number one. You can open the door and let Jesus come into your house, clean the house, and take over. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He stands at the door and knocks. Oh, right. You know, I'll tell you this. I tell a lot of churches this. I had a nephew. And he said, I think of salvation like this. I said, What does it mean to be saved? I was teaching Sunday school one morning. I said, What does it mean to be saved? Yeah. And keep in mind, he's probably eight years old. And he said, I picture Jesus is standing at the door of your house and he's knocking. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And he's got a vacuum cleaner, he said. No, my. He's got a vacuum cleaner, what do you mean? And he said, he wants to come in and clean your house. Yeah, man. He wants to come in and clean your house. Yeah. And you can do one of two things. There you go. You can let him in and let him stand with steamer in your carpet. Yeah. <laughs> or, Amen. You can turn him away. You can turn him away and say, well, it's not a convenient season for me. I don't think the time's right for me. Come back another day. Yeah, it'll probably be better in a couple weeks. Yeah. What some say. That's, That's what right. some say. But guess what? There may not be another chance. But he draws the heart. And I believe that the Bible promises us one time. Amen. Anything after that is grace and mercy. Anything after that is God's grace and abundant mercy. I'm thankful for second chances. I'm thankful for third chances. God loves us so much that He will go to the next hell of the He will go to the 50th chance, the 60th chance, but hallelujah. He loves us so much that He will give us that opportunity. He will seek those that which are lost. But He knocks. He stands at the door and knocks. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. The Spirit is drawing you. So when the Spirit's drawing you, what happens? You turn him away, or you come to him. Yeah. Yeah. One of two choices. Amen. That's right. That's right. If you let him in, he will come in and save your soul from hell. Oh, yeah. He will make you a new creation in himself, in Christ. It says that we are crucified with Christ if we accept him. And we are put under it in his burial with baptism. Lord be to God, we're raised up. Yeah. With his resurrection. Yeah. Glory be to God. I am thankful for tonight. He didn't just die on the cross. He didn't just die on the cross. And keep that in mind. He was buried. Yeah. And today he lives. Yeah. Glory be to God. I am so excited tonight that I can tell you about a man who is alive and well. Yeah. Man who lived and come out of the ground and well. I'm excited about a man who came out of the ground and well. He took my place. The sin was mine. It says that the weight of sin was put upon his shoulders. Yeah. It was my death to die. Because of my iniquity. Because of my sin. But God made another way. You, know, you see in the Old Testament, by the law of Moses, the lamb without spot, without blemish. An oxen without spot, without blemish. The first fruit of your crop had to be offered to God for your sin. But in today's modern world, what happened? We sin so much. How can we keep up with it? 
I'll just be honest with you. As much as I sin, as much as I mess up, as much as I fall short, how can I keep up with my sin with some kind of animal sacrifice? I don't think I could. I don't think that the world could keep up with the amount of sin. Amen. Because Satan has his finger wrapped up in so many things today. He's got it in the media. He's got it in the politics. He's got it in our school system. He even has it in our churches. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to sugarcoat the truth. Satan has his finger in our churches. He will let you sit there and be silent. I say make you. He will tempt you to. He cannot make you. I will correct myself. He will not make you do anything. You have a choice tonight. And that choice is yours. Heaven or hell. Simple as it can be. Heaven or hell. He stands at the door and knocks. Tonight, that question is yours. Which one do you choose? Will you let him come in with that vacuum cleaner and clean your house? Or will you turn away? Will you let him be that refining fire in your life that cleanses all the dross away and makes you a clean and pure gold that you can shine bright like brass until the day of the coming of the Lord Jesus? It says that who shall abide the day of his coming and who shall be able to stand? Let me tell you something. Nobody. Nobody will be able to stand. Amen. We'll bow in his presence. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Guess what? You can do it on this earth, or you can wait to do it in heaven. When you're at the judgment seat of Christ, when you're at that great white throne of judgment that the Bible talks about, which one would you rather do? Would you rather wait till it's too late? Because you're going to do it anyway. Amen. You're going to do it anyway. Think about it with me. Think about it with me. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. Every single one of us are going to confess Jesus Christ. Would you rather do it while you have the chance on this earth? Confess Jesus Christ. That he is my Lord and Savior. That he has taken you home to me.
word patience. You will come out stronger than you went in. What about those three Hebrew boys? What about when they went through the fire? That was physical, right? I think it was a spiritual test too, wasn't it? I think that God was testing them to see if they would stand. Even unto death. Guess what, church? It's coming. Hey, listen to me. It is coming. The Bible says that those that endure, oh boy, those that endure, We'll have a crown of righteousness. We'll have a crown of righteousness. Let me tell you something. Those three Hebrew boys, as they went through the fire, they were thrown in, they said, Nebuchadnezzar, we will not bow to your God. We will not bow to your statue. You know, I don't care who it is. President, you know, prime minister, whatever it is, I will not bow to your God. I will not bow to you. I will bow to Jesus Christ. That's the only one. God Almighty forbids me to bow to anyone but him. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you, there's a time coming that we're going to be like those Hebrew boys. Read the back of the book if you don't believe me. There is a time coming. There's a time coming that our faith will be put to the test, even to death. It says, but those that endure persecution... Until the end, the same shall be saved. Glory right. to God, the same shall be saved. I don't know about you, but I want to stand for the Lord, even if it means death. Yeah. Even if it means going through the literal fire yeah. in the pits and the depths of the furnace. Yeah. It says that they heated it seven times hotter yeah. than what it was supposed to be heated. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. They put the air to it, right? Amen. They made it hot. That's right. So that it should have killed them instantly. Yeah. They were thrown in. It says it was so hot that it even killed his strongest soldiers that he tried to throw them in with. It killed the soldiers. Amen. That was a hot fire, wasn't it? Amen. He made it seven times harder. Seven times harder. He threw those three Hebrew boys in. He said, we will not doubt your God. That's right. That's right. You know the rest of the story. They were thrown in, and Nebuchadnezzar looked into the fire, and he said, Oh, hey, man. Is it hard to see you there? Did we not throw three in? Did we not throw three men? But yet, I see four walking around in the midst of the fire. And the four looks like the Son of Man.
Lord Perry, yes. When you right. go to the point of, of selling your soul to Satan, that is a dark time in your life, right? I think that God can forgive any sin, but He says He will not forgive the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Right. Right. Blasphemy is against the Son of Man, forgivable. Blasphemy against God, forgivable. But when you go to talking against the what? The Holy Spirit. That's right. Amen. When you go against talking yes. about the Holy Spirit, you better watch yourself. That's right. Watch That's what right. you're doing because you're on dangerous ground. That's right. Yes. Amen. Let me get back to the point here tonight, though. Come on. Thank you, Lord. How many of us will say, God, take me through the fire? How many of us will say, God, take me through that wash? Scrub me. Get the scrub brush out in my life. Clean me. Don't just take me through the water, because it ain't going to be the stains out. That's right. Amen. Take me through the water and put the soap in. Yeah. Amen. Put the soap in. Get the scrub brush out. Start scrubbing on me, God. Get me up against the washboard so that I can come out clean. Take me through the fire. Make it seven times hotter. Make it ten times harder. Whatever you gotta do to separate the dross and the iniquity from my yeah. life, do it, God. Because the trying of our faith works patience. And when we fall into those diverse temptations, those trials and tribulations, Satan thinks that he's got us on the ropes, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He may do. He may have us on the ropes. But I know a man. Yeah. I know a man who will step in the ring for you. Yeah. I know a man who will step in the ring and fight your fight for you. Yeah. He will come in and he will give you the rest that you need. He will give rest to the weary and the burdens. I try. He will help I try. us tonight if we will call upon him. Amen. Glory be to God. For other foundation can no man lay I try. than that which is laid, Jesus Christ. That's it. That's it. So it says that the day shall declare it. Because it shall be revealed by fire. By fire. Yeah. Yeah. Guess what? God, like I said, is separating the sheep from the goats. Mm. When we come through that fire, we're going to know who the sheep are. That's right. Amen. We're going to know who the goats are. That's right. Yeah. It says he's going to gather the wheat into his barns. Mm. Yeah. And the chaff, he's going to bundle up. That's right. Yeah. 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 That's powerful tonight. Like, think with me on that a minute. The day shall declare it. There is coming a day that it shall be declared. God's already called the herd. I believe that. Because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. God is going to try you. That's my second point tonight. God is going to allow you to be tried. And say that he tempts no man. But he will allow Satan to tempt you. Yep. He will allow you to go through diverse temptations. Right. He will allow you to go through these trials and tribulations yes. to build your faith, Amen. to encourage you. So right. tonight, I want to encourage you myself. Amen. I want to admonish you and tell you that if you were in the lowest valley that you've ever been in, God's right there with you. Yeah. He is trying to make you a stronger person, Amen. but not just a stronger person. He's trying to make you a stronger, spirited Christian. Tonight. And that is, that is above all else. You know, we can have all these titles that we want in this world. We can be sir, man, pastor, electrician, plumber, whatever you are. But above all else, you ought to be a Christian. Amen. Above all else, you ought to be a blood bought, born again Christian. You go to a lot of churches, and they're content where they're at. They're not willing to be molded. That's right. That's it. Tonight, I want to encourage you. This church is willing to be molded. Yeah. Hold on to what you got. Just like Paul said, hold on to what you got. Yeah. Y'all are willing to be molded, and I appreciate that. Thank you, Jesus. If all churches are willing, right? Yeah. But still, we have to search ourselves. We have to look in the mirror daily. Right. Am I willing to be changed? When I read the Word of God, am I looking for a passage that I can use to cut somebody else down? Oh, brother, that's right. Or am I looking with the intention of changing my own life? Right. Yeah. Hey. Am I letting the word of God change me? Yeah. Refine me refine with fire. Me. Yeah. Am I letting the word of God refine me? Or am I looking, oh, let's just pick and choose this one and this one. I'll live by that one. Yeah. Uh, that one looks pretty good. I'll live by that one. And I'll cut this person down with that. Because oh, that's, yeah. that's what they did when they were 15. Yeah. I'm going to cut them down and not forgive them of that. I'm not going to let them go of that. Is that what we're looking at the Bible for? Because that's not the right way to do it. No, that's man. Right. That's right. When we look to this word, it ought to be with the intention yeah. of being molded. 
that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. Yeah. And anoint thine eyes with my salve, that thou mayest see. Yeah. That's Jesus' advice. Thank you, Lord. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Amen. Behold, what we talked about a minute ago. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Amen. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. Right. What we talked about a minute ago. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Thank you, Lord. Even Amen. as I have overcome and am set down with my father yeah. in his throne. Glory be to God. How many wants to sit with Jesus in his throne? Amen. How many wants to sit with Jesus in his throne? Amen. How many wants to sit with Jesus in his throne? I want to sit with Jesus in his throne because it says that he has overcome this world. We can sit with him in his throne if we overcome too. He says, take heart, for I have overcome the world. Because I have overcome, you can too. You can too. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. And you can be seated. I may preach another hour or two. There we go. Now. It's good to laugh in the house of God. He wants us to be a, a, a happy people. A peculiar kind of people. Where it says, I want to be a peculiar kind of peculiar person. I, mean, yeah. I want to be different. Yeah. I want to stand out from the world. Yeah. When yeah. you see me, yeah. do you see Jesus? Amen. Yeah. I am nowhere on the same playing field as Jesus. Let me get that clear. No. Nowhere on the same playing field. But when you see me, Come on. Yes. do I show you the love of God? Yeah, do I look like a person that is a Christian? Come on. Yeah, I am as guilty of this as any. When I go to work, or just I slump my shoulders. Oh, another day. Oh, gosh. Oh, that's my day. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? How many of you have been there? Oh, Christian. Praise God. Every Monday. Amen. That's me. Every week. Every Monday. I'm through with you. Yeah, I'm Sunday. Some on Sunday like that. It's a bad way to be. And I'm telling you, I am like that. I am no way perfect. These preachers here will tell you we are no way perfect. That's right, man. We're just purchased by the blood of God. Yeah, man. Yeah. 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 You know, a lot of people, they won't come to church because they think the preacher's perfect. That's not the case. Yeah, yeah. That's right. That's not the case. We just figured it out. Yeah. We have figured out that it takes the blood of the Lamb. Yes. It takes the refining fire. Yes. That's right. And let me get myself clear here. There's a lot of preachers that will stand up and lie to you. Amen. 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 Listen to me here. There's preachers. I mean, quote unquote preachers. Yeah. Right. Pastors. Yeah. yeah. That will lie to you. Come on. Amen. 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 The Bible talks about it. Amen. Clearly, it talks about it. <laughs> I think those men or women. Come on. Come on. Come on. Need yeah. a little bit of that refining fire. Amen. Yeah. I think that they need a little bit of that blood of Jesus in their life. Yeah. I think that they need a little bit of that refining fire. The Bible says that in the last days, there will come people oh, that will heap unto themselves preachers having itching ears. That's it. Yeah, that's right. Tingling ears, right? They want to hear something that makes them feel good. They yeah. get some high emotion. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Let me tell you a clear way to tell. The Bible tells us, and Jesus says this. He says that if he is out to get his own glory, don't listen to him. Don't listen to him. But if he is out to search for the glory of God, that's when you know a true minister of God. That's when you know if he is a true man of God. And I say man of God. Keep me straight here. I honestly believe that the men are meant to be the preachers. That's right. Come on. No offense to any ladies here. I love you. I love yeah. you with all my heart. Yeah. But we are meant to be the preachers. Right. Amen. Right. Women have just equally as important roles in the church. Amen. Amen. Men and women together, we are to bring up seed for God. 
We are to bring up children. Labor teach together. them. Yeah. Labor together with God. Amen. It says that we are co-laborers with God. It says that we are co-laborers with God. What's that saying? <laughs> we are working alongside the Almighty God. That's right. Yeah. True. That we are in this thing together. God has called us as men to preach, but he's called us as women too to evangelize, to go out there into the world and to change the world through the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have a testimony to share. We have a song to share. If God has saved you through Jesus Christ, you have something that you ought to share. You have something inside of you like that little song says, this little light of mine. Yeah. Yeah. We ought to let it shine. This little light of mine. Like that old song. I stood in a courtroom. 
in the soul it's going to fall on. Yeah. Amen. Through Jesus Christ who loved me. Amen. Who did not condemn me. He didn't condemn me because he loved me. Now let me get back into the message. <laughs> Jesus said in verse 18, Revelation chapter 3, I counsel thee, I advise thee, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. How many tonight want some of that gold tried in the fire? Yeah. That clean, pure soul tried in the fire? Yes. yes. I want some of that. Yes. Now this is Jesus' advice. Right. That's What's right. that mean? Like well, Brother Job says, bend the ear to that, right? Yeah. 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 Listen to what he's saying. Yeah. Yeah. The world needs a little bit of that, doesn't it? Yeah. The world needs to hear it, whether it be on yeah. YouTube or Facebook or wherever it is, whether it be in the house of God, whether yeah. it be on the street yeah. corner, it doesn't matter. The world, like God <laughs> raising his hedges, needs to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. I counsel thee. Here's my advice to you. Yeah. Yeah. First of all, be born again. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I counsel you to buy of me gold tried in the fire. Yeah. Get some of that from me. Oh, yes. I am the refiner's fire. That's what God says. That's right. Get some of that gold from me. Try it in the fire. Yeah. The dross separated and removed. Get some of that from me. What's it say next? That thou mayest be rich. Yeah. Not with money. That's right. That's right. The treasures in heaven. Yeah. Yes. Right. Glory be to God. With a home in heaven. And like I've told some churches before, I don't care if I have a big old mansion in heaven. I don't care if it's a little shack. I just want to see Jesus. Yeah. I just want to see Jesus. It doesn't matter if I have the tiniest little mansion in heaven. It doesn't matter if I live in a big old giant mansion. It doesn't matter. None of that matters. I want to see Jesus. He died for me. Amen. He died on a cross of Calvary, taking our place. God saw, like we was talking about just a minute ago, God saw that we could not keep up with our sin death. Right. We wasn't going to be able to kill enough lambs. You get it? Amen. You get what I'm saying? We were not going to do it. And a lot of people were going to die and go to hell. Yeah. Right. God saw that. He saw that there had to be another way. Yeah. He said, you know what? I've got a perfect lamb. Without spot. Without blemish. Yeah. Without wrinkle. Yeah. I have a perfect lamb in my father. Thank you, Lord. And he's my son. Amen. My beloved, one and only begotten son. Yeah. You know what verse? John 3.16. Yeah. God so loved this world. Yes, he, he loved you and me. Loved us. What does that mean? He loved us. He cherished us. He cared about us so much. Mm. Glory be to God that he Amen. sent his son. Yeah. The perfect lamb. Thank you. The perfect propitiation for our sins. Yeah. Yeah. To be slain. Yes. The final sacrifice. Yeah. Amen. All you got to do is accept it. Yep. All you have to do is accept that Jesus died for you and believe that God yeah, raised him from the dead yeah. and you shall be saved. Yeah. Believe that God yeah. sent his son Jesus to die for your sins and accept that in your life and believe that God raised him from the dead that we don't serve a man that just went into a ground like a Buddha, right? Come on. Come on. Come on. Buddha was a man. He lived. He actually walked this earth. Yeah. Guess what? He went back to the dust where he came from. Right. 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 Just a man. Sure, he was, Amen. was enlightened or whatever. I don't know. They teach you that at school. Amen. Buddha was this man that was enlightened. Well, let's follow after him. No, absolutely not. No. No. That's right. He was a man. Yes. God sent his son. Amen. Amen. He's also a man. Yeah. Guess yeah. what? He was the son of God. Amen. Amen. Satan 
in hell is going to be the one tormenting you, right? That's what I say. No, he's being punished with you. That's right. Keep in mind that Satan has no Amen. power over you. That's right. If you let yourself be, you will be on the same level as Satan. That's right. He has no power over you. Jesus holds the keys. That's right. To death and hell. And because of his Amen. victory, yeah. he has overcame death. Yeah. Yeah. He got over that roadblock. He overcame hell. Yeah. So that we can too. Yeah. We can too. Yeah. And we can Amen. more than overcome through him that loves us. The scripture says that we are more than overcomers. That's right. How exciting is that? Amen. Jesus said, I overcome, but you can be more than an overcomer. Yeah. You can have the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I will send my comfort that will comfort you and you will not leave you alone. Yeah. Glory be to God. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Yeah. Tonight, God wants a church that is not lukewarm. That is not just sitting on our thumbs. That is not sitting back, relaxed in the chair. He wants a church tonight. Yeah. Hot. Yeah. Hot. That's right. That's right. Amen. What about that? How about Come on. seven times hotter than it's supposed to be? Yeah. <laughs> How about eight times hotter than it's supposed to be? Yeah. What the world says that we're supposed to do and tries to put us in this box as Christians, what they say we can and can't do, right? Mm. Yeah. You can't go to church. There's a virus. There's a pandemic. Come oh, on. Oh. Oh. God forbid you can't go to church. Yeah. Come on. Mm. How many of us are caught up in that? You can't go to church. You know, put you in a box as Christians. Yeah. You know what? You know what I say to that? Fan my flame. chest and my heels and everything. Yeah. that salve all over me. Yeah. She believed in that salve. <laughs> Worked pretty good. Yeah. This is a different kind of salve. Yeah. This is Holy Spirit salve. Yeah. Come on. This Amen. is Holy Spirit salve that when it rubs on your eyes, mm. 
You're going to see differently. Yeah, yeah. Come on, you know what that's called? That's called Holy Spirit discernment. Yeah. You are going to be able to look at the world through a biblical lens. You're going to be able to see people, things, places, everything different than you did before. Right. You will not see things like you used to see. It. You will not want those things that you used to want. But guess what? When you get a taste of the Holy Spirit, there's not going to be a desire for you to look back. Right. You are going to be changed. Yeah. And then I said, Close your eyes. And I'm talking about the eyes of the heart. That's right. The eyes inside of your heart. Yeah. So what have we talked about tonight? Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. He's a refiner's fire. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. He will be a swift witness against the evildoers. Right. I didn't preach much on that. Let's talk about that in a minute. He will be a swift witness in judgment, he says. Right. In yeah. judgment. Yep. Yeah. He will judge those that oppress people. Yes. He, will he will judge those who oppress the hireling and his wages yes. and, says, and those that oppress the widow and the fatherless. Yes. We are called to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Right. We're to help the widow, the fatherless. Right. Those that need help, guess what? We meet their needs physically, they're going to want to listen to what we have to say about Jesus. That's right. And a lot of times they're going to come to church with us, right? They're going to get some of that Holy Spirit in running yourself. They're going to get saved and born again because we help them physically. Yeah. He will come near unto us into judgment. There is coming a day. Oh, yes. The great white throne of judgment. Where God sits on the throne. Mm. He looks into that book of life. Let's put it as simple as we can put it. Were you saved, Andrew? Were you born again? Where did you never know? For tonight, I'm going to tell you, so that you know, I've been born again. Amen. I have a new name written in God's book. I have a new body that's going to fly high in heaven. When that new Jerusalem comes down out of the sky, the old and the former has passed away. I got a new name. What about you? Do you have a new name tonight? Yeah, Are you going through a hard time tonight? Are you in the depth of your sorrow? I've been there. Come on. There's been some hard times. Life will hit you with a rough cut. Yeah, it sure will. hit you right in the gut. Yeah. It'll knock you out of wind. It will get you to where you're just so weak. Yeah. You go to work and you're around all this filth and trash. People with their filthy communication, people with their cussing, people with yeah. the talks of alcohol, yeah. 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 you know what I'm talking about. Amen. Yeah. Right. It's been around. It's called sin. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It will oppress you. Yeah. yeah. It talks about in the Bible a lot. Living in Sodom. It says that, that righteous man's soul was vexed. Yeah. That's how I feel sometimes. What about you? Sometimes when I'm in this world, I feel vexed in soul. Because of the wicked. Like David wrote, the wicked surpasses me. Yeah. The wicked is succeeding. Not failing, brother. What, what's going on here? Yeah. Why are the wicked driving these new fancy cars? And, yeah. and why are they getting everything that they need? And they're they're doing great, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm struggling. Why am I going through a hard time, God? Are you in that time in your life? Are you in a time in your life where it seems like there is no end? There's no light at the end of the tunnel. Satan's lying to you, trying to get you to do who knows what. He's lying to you. The first thing Satan did in this world was lie. Yeah, yeah. He will lie to you. He will deceive you. He will try to get you on the ropes yeah. to where you're getting out of the fight. But tonight, God is asking you something. Will you let him refine you? Oh, yes. Do you know that he's refining you? Yeah. When you're going through that hard time, that struggle, that trial, that tribulation when you're going through that. Do you know that God is making you a better Christian? Oh, Amen. Praise God. God. How many of you have been through that? Thank Raise God. your hand. Yeah. How many of you have been through that refining fire? Yeah. To where it has been so hard in your life? Oh, yeah. I mean, I can't even describe it sometimes. You hit your knees in tears. Yeah. You think, how am I going to pay my bills, Lord? Yeah. You know. God, my car broke down. God, this happened. God, that happened. How is this going to happen, Lord? You know, like that old song says, six days just ain't that long, Lord. Yeah. I got meals coming through, Lord. Six days just ain't that long. Yeah. God delivers again. Yeah. God delivers again. Yeah. Man. I tell you what, 
tell you what, if you will put your trust in Him, yeah. if you will make Him your strong tower, yeah. your fortress, even when you go through that fire, it's going to seem rough. Yeah. It's going to be hot. There's going to be a lot of pressure. Yeah. Yep. Guess what? He's cleaning you up. Yeah. Come on. He's man. cleaning you up, making you fit for the kingdom of heaven. Actually, yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you how I think about it. <coughs> I think about us. We're playing on a potter's wheel. That's right. right. Hit on this. We are playing on a potter's wheel. Yeah. God is the almighty potter. Yeah. And he's forming us and working on us. And he's got his example sitting on this table over here. Yeah. That example is Jesus, right? Yeah, that's right. Perfect. Yeah. Spotless. Perfect vessel. And he looks back to that and says, I'm going to make this job look as much like that vessel as I can. Mm -hmm. I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to smooth out the rough edges. And sometimes it hurts. When he's yeah. smoothing out those rough edges, yeah. it hurts. Yeah. Yeah. Where are you at, God? What are you doing? How many of you have had questions before? How many of you have questioned God? I have. Where are you at, God? I need you, God. Yeah. That's what that's biblical. Come on. Yeah. That's right. It happened. That's right. History repeats itself. No, man. Come on. Where are you at, God? I need your help. Yeah. Guess what? He's smoothing out those rough edges on that cotton mill. Yeah. That's my example right here. He's perfect. Jesus. I'll make you like him. And he works on you and works on you and works on you. Until that day comes when he's ready to put you in the kingdom. Yeah. And make him on his head. And you will be made perfect. Amen. Yeah. You will go through that fire. Yeah. It'll be hot. But you come out a perfect vessel. That's right. Hallelujah. How many of you tonight want to be used? Yeah. I want to be used. Yeah. I want God to flow through me. Yeah. That's right. You know, Brother Joe said something that's near and dear to my heart. Blessed are those. That hunger yes. and thirst yes. after righteousness, oh, yes. they shall be filled. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. How many of you are like that tonight? <coughs> I can honestly tell you tonight, I had that honest desire in my life yeah. Bless you, Lord. for righteousness. Oh, yes. I want my house to be righteous. Yeah. I want my thoughts to be righteous. Yeah. Yeah. I want my family to be righteous. Yeah. I want my children to be righteous. I want to be righteous in the workplace. I want my... The, you know, everything that I do, from the vehicle I drive to the clothes that I wear, I want everything that I do to be righteous. Yeah, yeah. Because that is what is is what that will get you the keys to the kingdom. Yeah. yeah. I want to be righteous tonight. How many of you are like that? Like King David, like King Solomon. They hunger after the wisdom of God. They hunger after the spiritual nourishment. Yeah. Brother Joe talked of it as a treasure map. Yeah. We can tap into the Word of God. Yes. It is a treasure mine. Yeah. Amen. How many of you hunger after that tonight? Oh, yeah, yeah. I do. Yeah. Amen. Amen. This is the road map. Amen. Amen. It sure is. It will fill you up. Yeah. That's right. It provides all that is needed for life and godliness. Yeah. 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 That's right. It is quick. Yeah. It is powerful. Yeah. Sharper than any two edged sword. That's right. Amen. What's that mean? Quick. Brother Joe talks about it a lot, too. Yeah. Alive. Alive. That's this right. word is alive. If you yeah. don't believe me, open Amen. it. Yeah. If you don't believe me, open it. Yeah. Come on. Guess right. what? Ask God for wisdom. Yeah. The Bible right. says to him that asks for wisdom, God will give us liberally. What's that mean? Yeah. What's that mean? He gives in generous amounts. Yeah. He will give it to you. Yes, he will. Ask for wisdom from this word. Yeah. You will see the world through some eye salve. That's right. You will see the world through a biblical pair of glasses. Yeah. Ask for it, and you will receive it. That's right. Believe in it. Yeah. Trust in it. Use this as the way. Yeah. Jesus said, I am the way, the, way. the truth, the life. Amen. Man, the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. That's my favorite verse. If y'all don't remember anything from this, remember that's my favorite verse. No man comes to the Father but through Jesus Christ. Amen. Search for wisdom. Search for righteousness. Ask God. And I dare say, ask God to take you through the fire. Yeah. Mm. Ask God to take you through the fire and see what He does to you. Amen. He will clean you up, make you pure, and make you holy. Amen. Ask Him for that white rainbow.
This is what I've been thinking about this today. I believe back in Genesis. Didn't God give us the authority over the serpent? Yes. He said that we shall bruise his head. Oh, right? But if we ain't careful, he'll bruise our heel. That's what it says. He says, I'm gonna make that serpent slither on his belly. You shall bruise his head, but he will bruise your heel. So let's take that for what it is tonight. He has no authority over you unless you let him. Amen. He is not welcome in this church. Get out, Satan, in the name of Jesus. He is not welcome in this church. Sin brings forth death. That's Bible. 
the scripture from Aaron. Yeah. I encourage you, look it up. Test what I've said. Look it up in the scripture. Test God, like Brother Joe said. He was ready. He is willing. He doesn't want to hold anything back from his children. He doesn't want to hold anything back. He wants to bless us spiritually, save our souls. He wants all of these things. It is not his will that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. God doesn't want anybody to go to hell. Listen to me. God doesn't want anybody to go to hell. It is his will that all come to repentance. He loves this world. He loves us. He loves this church. He wants us to come and repent. Jesus. Not a repeat of prayer. Not repeating after a preacher or shaking some preacher's hand. That's not going to get you in. That's not going to do it. You see these youth revivals today that, oh, say this prayer after me. Oh, Lord, come in my life. Say this. Don't listen to it. It's garbage. That is not a true man of God if he says this. He's out for his own glory. And dare I say he's out for the money. Money is the root of all the Lord of us. Tonight, listen to me. It is a personal salvation. A personal relationship with your Savior. Sisters, we become women. 
We become men and women of God when we take that next step in faith. Getting saved. Stepping out of the boat. What about old Peter? Oh, man. You talked about it this morning. What about old Peter? When he seen his Lord coming in, and he, saw, he said, Lord, bid me come to you. I want to come to you. Bid me to come. So he did. He bid him to come. And he stepped out of the boat, right? Well, just imagine that pew tonight is a boat. Will you step out in faith? Because guess what? If you will take that first step of faith tonight, you'll be floating on air the rest of the way. You will walk on water up here if you keep your eyes on Jesus. But if you look away, what's going to happen? You're going to sink. Come on. Keep your eyes on the prize tonight. I've read the back of the book. Guess what? It says that we win. Amen. The back of the book says that we win. Jesus has overcome this world, and we can too. Glory be to God. Somebody ought to shout for that. We can overcome this world through Jesus Christ. More than overcome. Tonight. Listen to me tonight. Don't turn away. I feel like tonight's a special night. Oh, why not tonight? Softly and tenderly. Oh, come, sinner, right? Jesus is calling. Jesus is calling. And maybe you've been saved. He's still calling this way. He wants you to have a revelation. He wants you to have an experience with Him. An experience where you get some of that I say out of the heart. You see like you've never seen before. The Holy Spirit will move you out of a living, breathing example. It will move you. Tonight, let us sing a song, an invitation. Come and pray as God bids you.